Hello and welcome back. And did you know it's been a year since Ugreen launched their NAS Sync series, the DXP series? I know there's going to be some of you out there keen to highlight that Ugreen already had a series of NAS devices prior to this one's launch in the East, and you're absolutely right. But in today's video, I want to talk about the Ugreen NAS Sync series one year later. We've already made a bunch of videos about these solutions, comparing them against others, talking about what we liked and what we didn't. But in this video, I want to talk about this series, where Ugreen succeeded and where, frankly, they've still got stuff to do. And if you're thinking of buying a Ugreen NAS, and I recommend you wait until the end of the video as we go through everything that's changed over the last year, uh, they are running during World Backup Day a 20% off promo on both their own website and Amazon, running from the 25th of March right the way through to the 31st of March. And they're sponsoring today's video, which allows me to not run any ads on this. But before we go any further, it's worth highlighting these words are my own, these aren't Ugreen's own. This is my perspective based on monitoring Ugreen for the better part of a year. They've got no control over anything I say, and frankly, they're probably not gonna like some of the things that I'm gonna say in today's video, but I just wanted to make that abundantly clear early doors. Now, first things first, we gotta talk about a year ago, that crowdfunding campaign. Was it a success? Well, yeah, it was a great success. Let's face it, lots of users purchased it and the majority of users received working units. There were the odd report I could find of some users receiving units that weren't ideally working for one fashion or another, but it seems like those were within an acceptable margin, perhaps of RMAs and, you know, traditional standards. You could look at any NAS brand in the market right now. Additionally, and this is something I covered in a previous video with some other YouTubers discussing whether people should back that campaign, um, one of the things that uh, Ugreen did really, really well in terms of marketing their product and something we have seen bore tremendous fruit in the last 12 months or so was their marketing campaign. Unlike a lot of brands in the market that have a tendency to pay marketing companies in the middle or sponsor different channels to talk about their product, Ugreen just took that budget like they would have allocated to those processes put it into a, maybe a thousand different review samples and sent them all over the world. That's why there was these tremendous waves of coverage of Ugreen solutions there. Now, when they did send all these units, they sent them to what's known as micro-influencers and in some cases macro. They didn't go for your big Linus tech tips. They didn't go for the top tier. They went for the middle to the low scale ones in terms of subs and more. And the result was that those platforms, although they were as honest as hell and they weren't paid to talk about it in any way. The result was that not only did they talk about those solutions, they talked about it a lot. New Green didn't try to stop anything negative that was said. And I can only speak for myself when I did say negative things about their products. They didn't reach out to me during production, didn't reach out to me after production to remove or edit anything. And again, a year later, what we have seen is that coverage snowball, and that's why you still continue to see Ugreen NAS solutions be talked about as much as they have. And I know this is all a bit inside baseball, but this is why you didn't see, and you still don't see to date, a lot of Ugreen NAS solutions being talked about in some of the larger platforms in the market right now. This isn't me throwing stones. It's just a simple case that there are some tremendously larger platforms than most of the micro or mid-tier platforms out there that have very rigid rules with regards to sponsorship, with rigid regards to a lot of the product costs and production costs, I should say, that didn't really meld that well with the way Ugreen wanted to send a lot of their products. It's one thing for them to supply a solution, but that doesn't equate to paying for the time and effort that goes into producing a video, producing a review. And unfortunately, there was definitely a clash of cultures there. This is something we're seeing change, by the way, and there are some enormously popular platforms now talking about Ugreen NAS, but it has to be said that in the early days of the Ugreen solutions being marketed and talked about online for consumers or businesses to learn if it suited their needs. The largest platforms were not talking about this in the way they are now. But that's enough on the nuts and bolts about how Ugreen bunged their product in front of your eyes. Let's talk about the bloody thing itself. Now, in terms of software, the UGOS or Ugreen operating system, it's all right. I'm not going to say it's anywhere close to Synology DSM now. I'm not going to say it's QNAP QTS. I'm not going to say it's bloody um, true NAS or Unraid, but I will say they have stuck at it. They have continued to do release and firmware updates uh, throughout the course of the last 12 months. They have listened and added a number of different applications. There's still no Plex app, weirdly, 
but there is a Jellyfin app. So if you do want to install Jellyfin, it is a one-click installation. They've added more uh, entertainment packages. They've added more file processing packages. However, there is still a lack of iSCSI. A complete lack of iSCSI is a real pain for many. And I've spoken to Ugreen about this and asking them why they haven't implemented it yet. And they say they are. But a year on, I'm still waiting on it. But there is support of virtual machines now with a proprietary app. There is a Docker application. There's even two-factor authentication, something that was one of my biggest bugbears about this system when it rolled out the gate, that this is a relatively, at least in the NAS world, unknown company that was rolling out a NAS system with your data with remote access with no two-factor authentication. That is there now, but... It's still not enough as far as I'm concerned with the security scanning application still leveraging more towards antivirus and anti-malware and not anti-ransomware. There is additions and modifications that allow you to uh, modify your auto block, modify a lot of the access protocols, modify who can access it with IP lock, Mac locking, uh, Mac blocking as well. And that's all being integrated, but still a one click system protection app that favors more towards ransomware and unauthorized access prevention and not antivirus and malware, there's still a ways to go. Now, the usability of UGOS, the responsiveness of UGOS, and the features that are getting added granularly to UGOS all sound good to me. Everything from nice air gapping settings for having the system and its powering on and off to be scheduled as much as possible, and a lot of the configuration and settings towards the storage and the shared folder and the displaying of thumbnails have all improved vastly. And on the subject of the files on the system, the, the integrations with regards to AI and the AI indexing and the AI models that run from within this system with local only access, so no external internet access, have improved vastly. Now, this isn't me referring to some of the AI implementation that they were talking about at IFA and CES for their IDX series, but for the DXP series for uh, photo recognition and other kinds of recognition and AI services within the settings have improved vastly with optional models that can be updated individually and disabled one by one if you choose to. But it still has to be said that one year since its launch on Kickstarter and around six to seven months since its availability on traditional retail platforms, global availability of Ugreen's NAS is still underwhelming. It has been made available in some places in Europe and I believe it's being launched in the UK now. And dare I say, it's actually been available via Amazon in numerous regions, including the UK, for quite a while. But one year since its launch, its global availability outside of Germany, outside of America, outside of pocket areas of Europe has still been not ideal. And it seems really weird to me given the popularity of it because it has been a very popular product that it still doesn't have a vast amount of availability. And circling back to uh, my mention earlier on of IFA and CES over in Vegas, when they unveiled their IDX systems, one using uh, Intel Ultra processors there and the other one not, these are these significantly more AI-focused devices. And I think, although there is a market for local AI deployment and local AI services uh, for running models and more without internet and remote access. So you take all of your data away from a cloud service where you would take advantage of time saving and efficient um, AI processes to get jobs done, but have them only work locally in your network. It's not for everyone, not everyone wants it. And the big question is when these IDX systems arrive, are they going to serve as alternatives to the existing DXP series? Are they replacing the DXP series? And unfortunately, we simply don't know right now. It feels like at the moment, it is going to be a parallel line running side by side with the existing DXP series, but by no means replacing it. But right now, if you are thinking about buying a Ugreen NAS and you're thinking, should I buy this or hold out for the next iteration? I'd say this is gonna be around for quite a while yet. But this leads to, for many, the biggest barrier for them purchasing a Ugreen NAS, and that is, is it safe? They've been around now for a year since their initial crowdfunding and a, you know, general retail availability for around half a year now. Is their software as safe as the likes of Synology, the likes of QNAP Terramaster and Acer Store? 
that's hard to pin down. Now, the reason being is their software has just not been around long enough. And although you can find lots of reports online of people saying, no, my, nothing's ever happened to my system, no one's ever broke in, I've had it utilizing their services, for many, that's just not going to be good enough. And if you are concerned about running a Ugreen NAS and you're wondering about whether it's safe, right there, there's your answer. I'm not suggesting their software and their hardware is unsafe, but I would say if you're concerned, remember that you don't have to use Ugreen's remote access services. You can run out all the security settings the way you want, stick it behind a VPN. Alternatively, use a third party uh, remote access service like Tailscale that you can install via a Docker, and there are other apps and services on there. Um, Bottom line, if you're curious about how safe the software is with regards to remote access, and if you're opening up back doors, you've already answered your own question there. You can use a third-party NAS software like TrueNAS or Unraid, and Ugreen themselves have allowed users to be able to install that third-party software on their systems without it invalidating the hardware. But right now, it's just too early to completely confirm or say how rugged and secure that software is. That's not me saying it's insecure. It's me saying that I would still consider buying one, but if you have your doubts, go ahead and use third-party VPNs and third-party remote access services instead. And as mentioned earlier, two-factor authentication is now available. As mentioned earlier, you can create customized access rules to your system very easily, and you can modify the firewall to your own behest of your own needs and make sure you blacklist and block anything that may concern you before it happens the very first time. Again, judging the security of a NAS, we have to also, if we're going to draw comparison to third parties, remember that sometimes security implications are there from the way the system is set up poorly. And the variable options are there in most cases. The majority of the control is provided to you within Ugreen's UGOS system there. But I would argue it perhaps needs to be a little bit better presented to end users in a way that the existing NAS brands in the market already provide. Bottom line, it's been a year and frankly, I'm really pleased that Ugreen are in the market. I'm getting no impressions from them that this was a one-off and they're going to ditch out of things. If anything, it seems that they're going to double, if not quadruple down. They are going through mass hiring from different regions. And again, I've alluded to this in other videos, but when I have attended uh, different trade shows in the last six to 12 months and Ugreen have had a stand there, it's kind of surprised me how many ex Synology X QNAP, X whatever, I bumped into at those stands that I've seen. So clearly they're taking it seriously and they're headhunting as well. No brand does that if this is going to be a flash in the pan movement. Again, I can't speak for them. None of the words in this video are theirs. They are mine. But as someone who has monitored this industry for as long as I have, he said arrogantly, I'll say right now that they are doing the good moves in terms of promoting their brand and putting their product in front of people. Is it perfect? No. But I do think, as I said in previous videos, the likes of Synology, Kinup, and more should be watching these guys because they're making the moves. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Are you someone that purchased a Ugreen NAS and you've been left happy or sad? Or you are someone that's on the verge? Maybe you've been looking at refresh devices from the likes of Synology that were, let's be realistic, leaked recently, or from other brands out there and you've not been as satisfied with what you're seeing and you're tempted by it. And I hope this video has helped you. And if it hasn't, let me know what you would have liked to have known in the comments and hopefully I can let you know. Uh, there'll be links in the description, obviously, to where you can get hold of these devices from numerous retailers. And if you found this video helpful. And if you were gonna shop at those stores anyway, make sure those two things are true. Let me know in the comments below and use those links. It results in a small commission to me and Eddie here at NAS Compares and it allows us to keep doing what we do. But just make sure those two things are true before you click those links. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.